Hello, my stats friends. I hope you're having an awesome day. Uh, we're going to do 8.2 today, which is basically, long story short, we're going to make confidence intervals with proportions and then look at all the things that we need in order to do so. Then we're actually going to do it. So that's kind of what the swabat is. Feel free to read that really long paragraph. Okay, the really long bullets. Okay, so number one setting up a confidence interval for P. So any confidence interval is going to have this form, the statistic plus or minus the critical value of the statistic, or, um, sorry, the statistic plus or minus the critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic. Okay, so in our case, we're doing it for proportions, categorical data, percents, that kind of a situation. And so because of that, our statistic is p hat, and then the standard deviation of the statistic is going to be the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of p hat. So let's take a look at what those actually are. All right, so we've got p hat plus or minus uh, z star times the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of p hat. Okay, z star is our critical value for proportions, and that is fixed as soon as you know what confidence level you want. So if I want a 95% confidence level, my z star is going to come from that information, and I'll show you what that actually means a little bit later when we actually calculate it. But basically, you know, you're going to be going to the z score table and looking for... Um, a specific z-score that corresponds to the confidence level that you want okay and then your sigma sub p hat that comes from the formula for the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of um, p hat so I'll write that down for you as well okay look familiar right standard deviation of the sampling distribution of p hat is square root of p times 1 minus p over n that's from chapter 7 okay the problem is, when we're using a confidence interval, we rarely actually know what p is. So, unfortunately, we can't actually get the standard deviation most of the time. So instead we use, um, we have to use something else, okay? Um, and usually our best guess for p, for p that true value of the um, proportion that we're looking at, is p hat, right? The thing that came from the sample. So, um, we create our standard deviation out of that, and we, that's, because that's kind of the best we got. Um, so, we call that standard error, just so that we know, like, it's not exactly our standard deviation, but it's close. Alright, so the standard error looks exactly the same as the standard deviation. It just, you know, has a p hat instead of a p, right? So that comes from our sample instead of the population. Okay, so in order to make the confidence interval, we need three conditions, and these three conditions are going to be, you're going to see these over and over and over and over again, pretty much till the end of the year. So, get used to it. Okay, so your conditions, right, in order to be able to create the confidence interval, first of all, your sample has got to be random. Okay, so that's um, condition number one. Condition number two, you definitely need um, independence, and then you also need approximate normality, okay? And so we'll talk more about that in a minute. Okay, so your sample has to be randomly selected, okay? Um, independence, so either you have to have independent trials from one thing to the next, so like rolling the die. Each roll is independent of the previous one. Okay, so you could do, um, that might be the scenario, or if you're sampling, which is usually the case, um, sampling without replacement, you have to have a smaller sample size than 10% of the population, so that it's not making a huge dent in, like, every time you take out a sample of a certain size, you're not changing the proportions of the population much. Um, so you can still claim independence.
And then last is normality and same check as in cha last chapter. So n times p and n times 1 minus p have to be greater than or equal to 10. The only problem is, uh, yet again, we don't actually know what p is. So instead of checking p, n times p and n times 1 minus p, we have to check n times p hat and n times 1 minus p hat. Okay? Cool. All right, so we're going to actually do an example that I'm totally curious about. So say you wanted to figure out um, how many literally laugh out loud funny pictures there were of cats on Google Images. Some of them are hysterical and you will literally laugh out loud. Some of them are like <laughs> kind of funny and you just kind of giggle a little bit. And then some you're just like, that was really awkward um, and uncomfortable. So. What I did is I took a random sample from Google Images. Um, there happened to be 38 in this sample, so n is 38. And I found the proportion, I circled the ones that made me laugh out loud. And if you can't see them, you should Google it because they're funny. And I laughed. I think my favorite one's the packing one because the cat's covered in packing peanuts. I think the monorail cow is really funny too. It, looks like, it totally looks like a monorail. So crazy. Anyway, <laughs> there are some funny ones. So, anywho, I found uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 out of 38 that I thought were, that I actually laughed out loud when I saw them the first time. Okay, so that's our sample. Um, 10 out of 38, which means p hat is 10 out of 38. We don't know what the true proportion is, right? Because I would have to look at every single possible cat picture on Google, and that would be insane. You would not go to sleep, ever. I think there's millions of them. Anyways, so we're just taking a little sample. 10 out of 38, I laughed at. Cool. So here's the deal. Since we don't actually know what p is, our best guess for p to start out is 0.26, right, 10 out of 38, because that's what I observed in my sample. It would be silly to guess 0.3 because that's not a number that I've found in my samples. So that'd be kind of silly. So anyways, we're going to go through the four-step process and to build and interpret a 90% confidence interval of how many funny cat pictures there are online out of the total number of cat pictures. So that's basically my state, right? You basically want to restate the question. Then we've got the plan. And the plan is all about checking those conditions. And so those conditions are going to be the same as above. OK, number one, were they random? Yes, the pictures were randomly selected. That'll be given to you in the problem. Or um, if it's not given to you, you have to say, um, we don't know if these are randomly selected, but we're going to assume so for the purpose of this problem. If they were not randomly selected, then you can't really use the uh, confidence interval appropriately or something along those lines. But again, do not cop out of the problem. You won't get any points. Ah. Okay, number two, independence. So the probability of one cat picture being funny is not independent of another because if I remove one cat picture that changes the proportion of the entire population but if my sample size is small enough in comparison to the population that doesn't really matter so for this case we're going to check that n less than or equal to 10 percent of the population so is 38 less than or equal to 10 percent of the population yeah we can definitely safely say that there are more than 380 cat pictures on google images Okay, and then last but not least, is the sampling distribution of p hat normal, right? And so that's that n times p, n times 1 minus p. But again, we don't have p, so we're going to use p hat instead. That's the best guess we have for p. All right, so when I plug these in, I have 38 times 0.26. That's unfortunately under 10, but it's really, really, really close. So we're going to continue with our observations anyways. Maybe you want to mention, hey, by the way, 
Maybe next time you should use larger sample size. But anyways, and then n times 1 minus p is definitely greater than or equal to 10. So we will continue and we will say for today, oops, that's only two, okay, that all three of our um, conditions are, have been um, met. Okay, so now is the do part. So here we go. So here's what we need to figure out. We want p hat plus or minus uh, z star times the standard error. Um, and so I'm going to plug in my p hat and my standard error, and then we'll figure out what z star is really soon. So I plug those numbers in. I get 0.26 plus or minus z star. We still haven't looked at what that is yet. Uh, times the square root of 0.26 times 0.74 all over 38. All right, so here's the deal. To find the z star, um, you have to think about, okay, what is my confidence level? Okay, confidence level is 90%. So what that means is you want 90% total in between, um, on both sides of the, the, the mean proportion. Okay, so what that means for 90% is you want 5% on one side and 5% on the other. Okay. So you need to figure out what z value corresponds to 5% below because you want 5% on either side, right? And so you'll have a negative version and then a positive version. So then we look at the table, the z-score table. Okay, so here's our z table. We're looking for 5% because we want 5% below that z value. And so here's 0 0.0559. And that's going up. Okay, so you want to find the closest to point. 05 as you possibly can. Um, and so I think you're going to find, find it around here, 0 0.0455, and then the next one up is 0 0.0559. So it's somewhere between negative 1.6 and negative 1.5. Um, nope, I totally lied. This is closer, right? So right here. So this is negative 1.6, and then you go scroll up to see where that is. Um, negative 1.645-ish. So our z-score is approximately negative 1.45-ish, I think is where that was, or, well, sorry, totally long day. Okay. So that's my z value. I'm going to use the positive because it doesn't really matter which one I use. Um, and then I plug that into my confidence interval to figure out what values I'm 90% confident that the true value of the proportion of Google images of cats, funny cats, lies between. So let's go ahead and plug those numbers in. All right, so plugging everything in, we get the interval between uh, 0.1429 and 0.3771. And so to... Um, conclude, we would say we're 90% confident the true value of funny cat pictures on Google Images is in between 0.14 and 0.38. Alright, last example. Imagine you want a 90% margin of error um, of only plus or minus 5%. So that's this piece here. We want this to be only 0.05, 5%. So we want to know what size sample do you need to get this. Um, and so you're still using your um, Z star for the 90% from the previous problem. And then you want to essentially plug in everything except N and solve algebraically for what N would need to be. All right, so here's my setup. My Z star is 1.645, which we got from the previous problem from the Z score table. And then my um, standard error is 0.26 times 0.74 over n to square root of that. We want that to equal 0 0.05. So now we just solve algebraically for what n would have to be. All right, so I solved this algebraically and I got 208.26, and that's my sample size, which I need to round up because um, if I round down, then the sample size isn't big enough. Um, so I'm going to say n has to be at least. 209 in order for the confidence interval with a standard error of only 0 0.05. Okay, really fast. This is how you do it on the graphing calculator. You go to stat, 
calc, you do test, and then you do one proportion Z interval. Plug in all your data, get your calculate, and confidence interval.